This is a 516 calendar. Calendar number five, and that was 43 of 2016. Michael Seitz, Chancellor, please. In many respects, this case is very simple. Rebecca Cutler didn't want or need the defendant anymore. Uh, she was cutting him off from her life and uh, from herself. And since Mr. Sykes, you couldn't be with her, uh, you wouldn't be with the children. And like so many other spiteful people in this world, you decided that if you couldn't have her, nobody would have her. If you couldn't have the children, nobody would have the children. It was callous, brutal, and inhumane. And even those words can't begin to describe the carnage, death, and destruction you caused. And based on the evidence of the two trials I presided over, <clears throat> there's no doubt that you caused all the death and carnage in this case. While the case is largely circumstantial, it is clear to me that this was premeditated. You said in your video statement that she didn't want you anymore. She didn't need you anymore. She didn't want you around the children. She was back with her old boyfriend, and you confirmed that by going through her phone. You confronted her. You took her phone so that she couldn't contact her old boyfriend. You told people she was cheating on you. And after spending the night at your friend's apartment, you took a knife when you left that morning. The knife used to kill Rebecca and the children. You waited outside a room that you weren't allowed to enter until there was no one around and the children and Rebecca went into the room. Then, by your own admission and your testimony in the first trial, you stabbed a defenseless and immobile woman to death. You stabbed her over 70 times. And then, as the jury found, you killed Zianna Cutler and your own child, Malia, and then tried to kill Mira. Anyone with an ounce of compassion would have stopped after the first stabbing. Anyone with any human decency would have stopped after the first victim. But no, you kept on. Anyone with any type of compassion would have stopped after the first child was stabbed once. But you didn't. You continued. You, you stabbed each and every child numerous times. You left the hotel room as fast as you could. You took the murder weapon with you and tried to dispose of it. The videotape shows you walking as fast as you can to get away before you hailed the bus. You called your mother, and while on the bus, you realized that there was incriminating evidence, the blood on your jacket. So you disposed of the jacket at the ferry terminal despite how cold the day was. Then you disposed of Rebecca's phone. In short, anything that could tie you to the Ramada Inn, anything that could tie you to the murders, and that you could get rid of, you got rid of. You admitted to killing Rebecca. She was unarmed and defenseless, yet you stabbed her over 70 times, all over her body, as if it was in a frenzy. And the wounds suffered by these poor, innocent children, in this case, are consistent with those inflicted on Rebecca in nature, number, and fury. Your daughter was alive in that room when the room was opened and the massacre was revealed. Your daughter lay in that room for an hour, alive, but with her life slowly fading away. Heroic men and women tried in vain to save her. They were hoping against hope for a miracle. They are rattled to this day about what they saw and how their valiant efforts were in vain. Their pain was etched on their faces and in their tears as they testified. You have never shown an ounce of regret. You have never shown an ounce of sorrow. The only person you've ever been concerned with is yourself throughout the, the, the case and its aftermath. <clears throat> While they were rushing lifeless bodies down a hallway and putting every fiber of their being into trying to save lives, you were getting high and playing video games. You didn't stay to help. You didn't call for help. You didn't alert anyone. You sealed your own daughter's fate. You made sure that if you couldn't have her, your own flesh and blood, no one would. Throughout these videos that I've seen, both when you were getting onto the bus, on the bus, on the ferry, and in your interrogation, the only concern I ever saw on your face was when you were trying to hail the bus and thought it wasn't going to stop. That was clear from the shot from the bus. And the only regret you ever had was for yourself when you were in your interrogation and realized you were caught and there was probably no way out of this. 
In this trial, you were found guilty of three charges. Murder in the first degree of the count two of this indictment for the murder of Zianna Cutler. Murder in the first degree of the count three on this indictment for the murder of Malia Sykes. And the attempted murder in the first degree of the count four for attempting to kill Miracle Cutler. In many cases, as Mr. Gucci points out, justice should be tempered with mercy. This is not one of those cases. You slaughtered a two-year-old, a one-year-old, and a four-month-old, the most vulnerable members of our society. And as the verdict attests, you showed no compassion or no mercy to innocent children. You deserve none from the court. You failed as a husband. You failed as a father. You failed as a human being. In my opinion, based on what you did, you do not, you do not deserve to ever see the light of day. So accordingly, your sentence on count two of the indictment murder in the first degree for killing Zianna Cutler and the others named therein is a sentence of life without parole. Under count three of the indictment, murder in the first degree for killing Malia Sykes and the others named therein, your sentence is life without parole. This sentence on count three will run consecutively to the sentence I imposed on count two. Under count four of the indictment, attempted murder in the first degree of Miracle Cutler your sentence is a minimum of 25 years, a maximum of life. This sentence will run consecutively to the sentences for murder in the first degree under counts two and three. In the first trial, you were convicted of murder in the second degree under count five as to Rebecca Cutler. I sentence you to 25 years to life on that charge. I now order that the sentences I am imposing today on counts two, three, and four run consecutively to the sentence of 25 to life already imposed on the count five for the murder of Rebecca Cutler. You were also convicted of grand larceny in the fourth degree, a lesser included of robbery in the third degree in the first trial. I sentence you to one and a third to four years of state prison consecutive to count five on that charge. I ordered that sentence, and these sentences I imposed today also run consecutively to the sentence I imposed, imposed on the count ten.